All right, man. Let me let me move along, man. Tell me how my sound is. Eleven alive news at five p.m. starts. Sounds good. Yeah, it's good. First at five, a former police yeah, officer good. remains behind bars without bond, accused of concealing a sixteen-year-old girl's death. Good evening, I'm Faith Jesse. And I'm Jennifer Bellamy. Today, 11 Alive obtained warrants showing the possible connection between Miles Bryant and Susana Morales. The two were close to one another when she disappeared six months ago in Gwinnett County. We have team coverage for you tonight. 11 Alive's Bo Beth Gates has been speaking with the Morales family about their reaction to these newest developments. But Brittany Kleinpeter begins our coverage digging deeper into the warrants, accusing Bryant of getting caught up in a lie the day after Morales disappeared. According to arrest warrants, we know that the 22-year-old is accused of falsely reporting a crime and concealing the death of 16-year-old Susanna Morales. Here is Officer Miles Bryant in court. Mr. Miles, I show that you have two warrants, a misdemeanor and a felony. Do you already know what those are? Yes, sir. Okay. Your bond was denied by the judge that signed the warrant. Now, the reason given was that you are a danger to the community. An arrest warrant obtained by 11 Alive today accuses Miles Bryant of falsely reporting his car was broken into at his Norcross apartment complex on July 27th and his gun as being stolen. That was one day after Morales went missing in that same area. Brian is accused of later dumping Morales' naked body in the woods. Today, a judge assigned him an attorney. Wow, man, I mean, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Man, that's one sick son of a bitch there, man. Yeah, man. It's worse than Scorpion Squad to me, man. I think so. Where's this at? This is the Atlanta area. Mm. Whatever the fuck her name is. Um, damn, man. I mean, um, on Brito, man. You, you, yeah. She, you know, she kind of outraged by this wicked. Hell yeah. yeah. She she kind of she kind of reminds me of that little Indian girl, you know, the one that was talking about, oh, you know. Yeah. You just need to, you know, I don't know, I don't know how this girl's head where she hair was at, but yeah, that Indian girl is this girl. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, look, she she's sixteen, the cop is twenty two, uh, not not much age difference there. I mean, but still, look, you know, six years is a, you know, he's a grown man, well, he's a cop. Well, he's grown well, well, no, I mean, if you're gonna rape a kid, you know, snatch her and rape her, that's pretty horrendous, right? This looks like it might have been a relationship. Like, I mean, uh, who who hasn't been in their early twenties and you know messed with some high school chicks, man? I mean, come on, man. Let's let's yeah. so, no. so did they say that? Because it sounds to me like he snatched her up and you know well, throw her body I, 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 I don't I don't think that that's clear. Let's 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 let's, let's listen to some more. Attorney cautioning him not to talk about his case with anyone else. Nobody knows exactly what's going to happen in your case. People who start telling you that they know what's going to happen in your case have no clue. The arrest warrant shows Bryant lived on Winscape Lane near Norcross, close to where Morales lived. She was last heard from when she texted her mother while walking home from a friend's house around 9.40 p.m. on July 26. Police believe at some point she likely got into a vehicle because her phone pinged around 10.21 near Oak Lock Trace. That was the last time anyone knew her whereabouts until her body was found just last week near the Gwinnett Barrow County line. Investigators are still trying to determine how she died, and the warrant doesn't offer any insight into that. She was walking home at 9.40 at night by herself. How did she die? She got sunburned. Nah, that's a... That's that's weird, bro. 940 ain't that late, man. Come on, get, get, get I mean, out of here. 940 ain't fucking late, man. Bro, it's still dark outside for a female to be walking. It's home. a little bit late. Uh, it's a little bit late. Uh, <laughs> not for no, not for no fucking sense. Not for no chick walking around. Nah, I ain't. nah. Mm -hmm. I, young I, girl. Think, on I, I think it's a little bit late. I ain't gonna lie to you, chick. I mean, it, it, would you let your kid walk around at 940? <laughs> no, but. Late? But it's common to see little girls going to and fro at fucking nine forty-five, man. Man, I don't know about that one, bro. Sixteen year olds, really? Yeah, dog. Like that's late, bro. Mm. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, who knows? Who knows what this girl's like upbringing was? She looked like a square from these pictures, but who knows, right? It's her. Yeah, it's her neighborhood. She's, 
Keep walking through. The cop was like, "Hey, yo, what's up, show day? Hey." <laughs> you said you you said the cop, or what? What did you say? The guy who did it is a cop. The black guy was mm. a cop. Mm. A cop. Damn. I didn't even realize he's a, that. He's a police officer. You see, he got no bond. If he was a regular pookie, he would have got a bond. Thank you for your service, right? Bryant worked mm -hmm. for the Dorfield Police Department, but as news of his arrest broke yesterday, we learned that he had been fired. Gwinnett County Police tell us this is still a very active investigation and more charges could be filed. No next court date has been set. In Gwinnett County, Brittany Kleinpeter, 11 Alive News. Bo Beth Yates continues our team coverage tonight. She talked with Morales' family and Miles Bryant's neighbors. Bo Beth joins us live from the apartment complex where the officer lived. Hi, Bo Beth. Hey, Faith. Well, Susanna Morales was last seen walking down this sidewalk on Singleton Road. If you follow me, you can see this is the complex where that officer lived. And she vanished while walking down this road in the direction to this complex. Hey, sh hey, shorty, hey, what you about to do? Hey, come here, come here, come here. Let me holler at you. She probably went over there, got hollered at, and, you know, she's like, yeah, da, 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 da. Maybe got in the car or whatever. She, she tried to get some head. She was like, oh, what you doing? One struggle happened. Oh, shit. Oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. One thing leads to another. He like, oh, shit. Man, this bitch might make me lose my job. Strangles her, drives her off into the woods, dumps the body, and then goes back and says, oh, maybe he shot her. And maybe he goes back and says, oh, shit, um, my car's been broken into um, and my gun was stolen. Because they, they, they charged him with that, too, falsely reporting the crime. Mm. So m maybe, maybe, but maybe he, he pulled that Cleota on her, too. It's, we don't know. Let's be honest. But, she was naked when she was found, right? That's what yeah, but I mean, that's afterwards. I mean, like, I'm, t I'm just trying to figure out what happened in the beginning. Her being yeah. found naked is, like, down the line. Yeah, what you said is plausible, but let's be honest as well. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not out of the realm of possibility that this brother did what this brother did. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I, I think it is. I think for, for, like, look where he is at his home. He, he would I don't think he would hunt like that I think I think he would I think he's more likely to holler at a chick see a little spicy Latina with a fat butt walking by and <laughs> you know, throw, throw throw some game at her than to like run up on her and Cleo for her mm. in front of his own house I just think that that's more likely now if he was mm -hmm. somewhere else you know what I'm saying I, I don't I don't put it past no man yeah I'll put it past yes. wicked okay well yeah, well, we'll see, man. It's unbelievable, honestly. I have, there's no words I can say, honestly, to explain. Jasmine Morales says her family is shocked to learn now former door. Now, look at her, right? They try to say them old mech, you know, them heads, them old mech heads. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's her. That's her right there. That, 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 that's them. You could tell black people, yeah, look at them old, them old stone head, old mech heads. That's, that's an old mech head. Look at it. Uh-huh. And you hear what you don't tell them about, about them Olmec statues in yeah. New Mexico that black people are trying to say are them. That's not it was Yeah. It's probably her great, 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 great uncle. To be honest. I see you look like it. Yeah, see only those that look like that all the time, man. Yeah. It, it's like black people say anything with big lips in the in the is them, man. Jasmine Morales says her family is shocked to learn now former Dorville police officer Miles Bryant. No, Easter Island is different. The Easter Island are, 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 are Pacific Islanders. They weren't Native Americans. The the ones on Easter Island, those they those people were Pacific Islanders, like Tongans and Samoans. They were come from that um strain. They weren't um Native Americans, they weren't on Britos. I think at some point they we were like during the migration, but it just changed, you know, for whatever I'm reason. About Easter Island. They somebody in the chat said Easter Island. The old Mex statues in Mexico were on Britos. Oh yeah, they were those Island. were the indigenous. Yeah, they were the indigenous of this. Easter land, yeah. Easter Island is an island off of the in the Pacific Ocean, off of um South America. Um, and those were not 
Native Americans. Those were Samoan type people. I, I don't. We got to come up with a name for them too. Those those Pacific Islanders. I don't know what we gonna call them. Somebody come up with a name for Pacific Islanders, man. Um, but yeah, Sea Tigers. Arrested in connection with the death of her sister. I don't. I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let, 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 let the chat. Let the chat. Dana good. Morales, who went missing six months ago. There's no other words besides that it sucks that it took so long, but um, I'm guessing that him being an officer has to do with that. The night of July 26, surveillance video shows Susanna walking down Singleton Road in the direction of her home before she disappeared. Court records indicate Bryant lived near Morales' home. Today, we went to another address in North Cross. It was listed in Bryant's jail records to see if a family member would talk to us. No one came to the door. Well, our search for answers didn't just take us to the address listed on Officer Bryant's jail records, but also to this apartment complex where he lived with his girlfriend and was taken into custody. And now neighbors who live in the area are in disbelief. It's hard to just put my mind around it right now. That this is the person that's been living over here in this complex. Like, what? The resident asked us not to disclose her identity out of fear of retaliation, but says while she did not know Brian personally, he has introduced himself several times as a police officer who also moonlight as security at the complex. Another neighbor shared this cell phone clip. So she says he introduced himself several times as a police officer. Hmm. So he's he he be he be spitting game, man. He crazy. These crimes are so bad. Yeah. Yeah, and then he lied. Like he, it's crazy because he he made up a story. They investigated and found that this was him. These people. They found this girl. That's true. That's very true. Mm -hmm. They yeah. found this girl naked. They don't. They haven't uh, said like how she died or what like exactly what happened to her so i think that they're still investigating that part but he filed a fake report that's how he got that's how he got got yeah that's facts 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 oh, yeah the volume i fixed the volume on the video but yeah facts man like um he he, he was that 22. was that miss berry talking yeah that's just that's the lovely miss man, berry, man. That, 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 that was fire that was straight fire she just put man um um yeah, uh listen man, um this this is with this with the Scorpion squad, man. Black cops, man. <laughs> listen. <Damn. laughs> they taking the ass, they taking a beat, man, these last couple of weeks, man. Like this is bad. If, if I want to know how long he was on the force. That's my 22. question. No, That's like, a good he, question. He, he, yeah. It, it couldn't have been long. It just it couldn't have been long. That's a bad hire right there. Yeah, nah, he looked real young. Yeah, he's 22. Let me see if they say it in, in the beginning. Accused of concealing a 16-year-old girl's death. Good evening, I'm Faith Jesse. And I'm Jennifer Bellamy. Today, 11 Alive obtained warrants showing the possible connection between Miles Bryant and Susana Morales. The two lived close to one another when she disappeared six months ago in Gwinnett County. We have team coverage for you tonight. 11 Alive's Bo Beth Gates has been speaking with the Morales family about their reaction to these newest developments. But Brittany Kleinpeter, begins our coverage digging deeper into the warrants accusing Bryant of getting caught up in a lie the day after Morales disappeared. According to arrest warrants, we know that the 22-year-old is accused of falsely reporting a crime and concealing the death of 16-year-old Susanna Morales. Here is Officer Miles Bryant in court. Mr. Miles, I show that you have two warrants, a misdemeanor and a felony. Do you already know what those are? Okay. Your bond... Yeah, he looked like he could have been on the Scorpion squad too, <laughs> Right? He's a bug out. <laughs> he's a bug out. He's definitely a bug out. But you know what? I think he probably he been he's trying he's like one of those that's like, yeah, I'm an officer. I do this and I do that. He probably offered this girl a ride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I think. Just, just peeled off. You don't think yeah. he you don't think he like just Cleothed her like Wiki said. I, I think he would use his know. job. I think he would use his job to get the, get her in the car. He was, yeah, well, he yeah, to get her to get in the car. They yeah. said he was working security in that complex. Mm. Hey, I salute to the, salute to those detectives. Good job, man. Kudos to them. 
Yeah, so he hasn't been on the force long. This is a this is a bad guy, man. You black cops, man. Um, what what do, let me see. Let me just say what a what a what a what a um pasty liberal would say or sister. Do better. You also moonlight as security. <laughs> that higher right there. Another neighbor shared this cell phone clip showing what they describe as investigators collecting a bed sheet from Brian's personal car. Then it and his police car were towed away. And mm. when we asked her about his demeanor for the past six months, that resident responded. Smiling, laughing, just living his life. And it's a whole poor baby that laid out. Like, what? Are you serious? The Gwinnett you... Police Department says their investigation continues and they and the family are asking anyone with information about this crime to come forward. In Gwinnett, Bobeth Bates, 11 Alive News. Thank you. So he's not, not going to have a very world. easy time in the slammer, man. He's both a cop and a chomo. Yeah, nah, this. not going to be fun for him. Retarded. They think he crazy. Facts. Oh, he's going to be in protective custody his whole time, probably. Call him a man of cheer, man. <laughs> he's in mm. the cheer. Hey, hey I, at the risk of sounding racist, right? I uh -oh. think they should hang him. Oh, man. Personally. Oh, no. Nah. Wicked, what you talking about? Wicked. Yeah, yo, yo, they should <laughs> hang, far, hang man. That's the hangman right there, nah, chief. You taking it too far, Wicked? Come on, man. Yeah, man. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Like, you fucking. But, <laughs> in this day and age, uh, you know, if a black person sees a noose, man, it just we just fall to pieces, right. man. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> I think twenty two is way too young to get caught. He I, I might believe. create his own. The noose, you know, yeah, he might hang yeah, himself yeah. up. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully. I don't think twenty two is too young to be a cop. I mean, I think, I think, I think twenty two. If you can be in a fucking army, you can be a fucking cop, man. I don't think no way twenty two is too young, man. That's, that's yeah, twenty two. Twenty two is the right age to be a cop. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, know, that's the thing that they say that like your brain isn't even fully developed until you're about oh, twenty. Yeah, that's just an excuse to make some men. That's a, just an excuse for some man crime. That whole brain not developing they're just doing that so they can um make some men not have to um go to prison and shit um, but you have to do college right before you become an officer yeah. at one point that that was the requirement you had to have at least like an associate's degree that's just that's just two years so that's easily like 18 to 20. he could he could join the force when he's 20 21. Yes, at the end of the day at the end of the day, man, um, it, being a cop, you have to be full of like verve and gusto and that youthful stupidity to run into a building and run towards bullets and run towards danger. And older guys are not really, you know, that's a young man's game, man. You know what I'm saying? So um, I have no problem with with um, young people being cops, man. Being a six-year-old boy gets his hands on his mother's gun and brings it to school with bullets leading to his mother's arrest. I'm Jason Martinez. And I'm Sheba Ross. Uh oh, they're arresting these sisters now, man. The good shit, man. I love it. About time. Lock these sisters up. Lock these sisters up because the majority of time it's going to be a sister. And every once in a blue moon, it's going to be a glider or a bleeper. But 90% of the time, it's going to be a sister. Being a six year old boy, boy gets his him. hands on his mother's yeah. gun and brings it to school with bullets leading to his mother's arrest. I'm Jason Martinez. And I'm Sheba Russell. This case serving as another reminder to lock up your guns. Jennifer, what more can you tell us tonight? Sheba and Jason, police tell me it was stunning to see that surveillance video on the school bus showing that six-year-old showing off the gun to other kids as well as those bullets. I talked to some parents right after school and some are outraged. They didn't know about this sooner. I come to Red every day. Sean Henley's granddaughter attends Gottwalls Elementary, which is grades one through four. She says it's upsetting to learn another student brought a gun to school last week. Anything could have happened to anybody's children. You just see what happened at that university with them three children. For my daughter not to have gotten an email or nothing, I don't know where the notification came in at. Norristown police say the student who brought the gun is only six years old. Detective Stephen Sowell was part of the investigation and says surveillance video shows the frightening show and tell on the school bus.
Even what? though we know no one got hurt, even uh, though we know right. that this was a happy ending, that we secured a gun, that there was not a tragedy, watching that video still like puts a, a, a bad feeling in your stomach. Police say thankfully a group of students who saw the gun immediately reported their concerns to the secretary when the bus arrived at school, which was then reported to police. Those young heroes were very key in making sure all the kids in that school stay safe and also the adults. According to the criminal complaint, the six-year-old told police his 10-year-old brother found the gun in his mom's dresser, took the bullets out, and started pointing it at him and pretending to shoot him. The acting chief of Norristown Police says all parents need to practice gun safety. Well, this is a certain school, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's definitely a sad school. Kids come to school looking like that, man. Um, D. A child is going to be very curious. They know what guns are. They know what they look like between TV, movies, social media, everything like that. If it's if it's taken apart, you know how to put it together, but a, a six to seven, eight-year-old probably won't. Police say the boy's mother, Jasmine Devlin. Ooh. I hadn't even seen this video, and I knew it. I mean, I just know, like, listen. When this is busy. When there's a school shooting, 90% of the time it's a son, man. She looked Even rough. though the face of it on mainstream media is some white kid. 90% of the time when there's a gun incident at a school, it's sons. She was on Instagram scrolling. She missed it. Mm, mm, mm. Goddamn, she boom. Almost got some people killed at the school. That kid could have shot somebody, man. On some real shit. Thinking and I bet this woman, I bet this woman ain't been to the range with that gun in many moons. If ever. How about never? Exactly. Yeah. And this is, put that shit in a dress or something? Like what the fuck? Yeah, this is this now listen. For, let's 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 also be sensitive. She's a sister, so she probably has a crazy boyfriend. And she may have needed it to be at the ready. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I'm just impressed they charged her, you know? I'm, yeah, not, exactly. I'm shocked, actually. I love this. Charged. We've been calling yeah. for this. We've been clamoring for this for a long time. Yeah. Ever since they, they charged that white girl, that white mom in, um, what was that, Michigan? Her, the son brought the gun to school and killed all them kids. And they charged the white parents. I forgot their name. but um, Even the one in Illinois. In the oh, parade, yeah, the I black know about the young man. It's about time because 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 once you start charging these white parents, you gotta charge these black parents too, and now it's gonna be disproportionate. Uh -oh. You wanna see the disproportionate um, rates. Police say the boy's mother, Jasmine Devlin, turned herself in on Tuesday. Detectives say the gun was a straw purchase, which means it was illegally transferred after purchase. We stopped by Devlin's home, but she refused to speak with us. Young people that were on the bus knowing what they saw didn't belong and there was something wrong with that and saying something. Obviously, their parents have taught them very well. The six-year-old's mom faces felony charges, including endangering the welfare of a child. The school district also issuing a statement saying that weapons of all kinds are prohibited on school grounds. But overall, everyone calling those young students who reported the weapon heroes for doing the right thing, Sheba. Yeah, it is important to speak up. Salute, man. Salute to those kids. Yeah, those kids no, definitely. Notice, yeah, that, notice that this straw purchase was not at a gun store or a gun shop for some rednecks or some suburban <laughs> soccer mom. It was the same person, you know what I'm saying, that you ordinarily would have an unlawful weapon. Exactly. Poof, 